Hello, I'm Heath. And I'm Nicole. Welcome. And we are visiting from our home in Phoenix, Arizona, and, and also the energy of our company, Living Meta or Living Loving Kindness, is coming to you virtually. <laughs> Thank you, A, B, and P, for having us for Move and Meditate, Meditate and Move time. And we're looking forward to sharing with you some of our favorite focusing, breathing, and moving uh, practices. Yes. All in the context of healing with COVID. And so we've gone through each letter of COVID to the fifth day, the letter D for dedication. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had like those big letters to hold up or something like that. Or like a, a Sesame Street little yeah. Muppet going, rrr, rrr. Totally made D. Sense Ma, uh, uh, uh. So D for dedication. dedication. Yeah. It feels like a diligent word. It's indubitably. Yeah. And it's it's got a structure. It's got some substance, some, some gravitas. Some, yeah. Like, mm, I am dedicated. And, and what are you dedicated mm. to? So in this time of uncertainty, unpredictability, where things are changing, of course, week by week and day by day, yeah. it seems, and a lot of things are out of our control. It's amazing. Yeah. It's weird to find, like, what is there to rely on? And I think what we can rely on is our own personal practice, my dedicated practice to self-care. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're personally dedicated to. And we want to invite all of you to join us in this intention of taking exquisite care of oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. So as we look through the, the lens of these healing moves, we want to start with breath. And what I want to remind you is a, a quote from Fritz Perls, the co-founder of Gestalt Therapy, who said, fear is excitement without the breath. Mm. So another way to say that is if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling scared or you're around others who are feeling that way, if you take deep breaths, you can convert that energy of fear into excitement. In fact, if you try on fear, anxiety, that that kind of uh, vibrating, quivery feeling, it shares a lot in common with excitement. But there's more breath with excitement. Well, we become more resourceful. When we feel ourselves breathing, we begin to presence ourselves and we begin to bring more of ourselves into the moment. When we, And that's when we become choiceful, resourceful, and responsible. And we can lean on our dedicated practice, our regular rituals to support what it is that we want to focus on. What is it that we want to bring more of into our field? Yeah, what is it that's uh, most important to you, your core values, your life's purpose? Your essence. What is your essence and what part of it, what, what of your essence wants to be expressed, acknowledged? So as we share this breathing <laughs> exercise with you, maybe bring forth what you're dedicated to or what you would like to dedicate the mm -hmm. next few days, weeks, or months. Uh, what do you want to dedicate your life to? So I want to share one of our favorite pranayama exercises from yoga called the 478 breath. And we're going to take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out, just a little transitional breath. Let go of whatever happened before, whatever's coming up now. Or a very deep breath with a yawn. Now it's contagious. <laughs> we'll give you an extra moment to yawn if you'd like. There's so many things that are contagious that aren't the coronavirus. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> kindness is contagious. Smiling is contagious. Laughing seems to be contagious. Yeah. So <laughs> dedicate yourself to things you want to be contagious. I, I bet you don't want fear and angst to be mm -hmm. contagious, so choose wisely. So now after that transitional breath, let's inhale for a count of four. Hold your breath for a count of seven. And I'm gonna actually call it a count of eight. Now exhale for a count of seven. So it goes four, eight, seven. Yes. Okay, thank you, let's do yes. it again, let's do it again. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm goofing myself up. It's four, seven, eight. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. This is what happens when you overthink things. <laughs> You're not. That's not familiar to no, you. No, I now. never do that. He never no, 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 no. anything. But when you when we start to overthink, when we start to get um, ahead, of, ahead of ourselves, I notice that our speed changes. So it's the opportunity that these breaths, that these moves, it gives us it gives us the opportunity to slow 
down, to mm. notice our pace, to get slow so that we can actually see where we're going, who's here, what's here, what's happening, how am I feeling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for bringing that back. Mm. So we'll try again. Yeah, what's it? Well, I love this because it's like what's like learning in public. Right, right. What, what's in this for me? Yeah. How is all of this in service of me? How is everything that's happening right now for my benefit? What can I learn from this? Yeah. What are the gifts, even of the not so wonderful, great things? You know, the things that you don't particularly like happening, there can be gifts, there can be discovery and growth. Yes. And I think that's also what can inform what the the dedication, what I'm dedicating my practice to. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Nicole. So we'll try again. Let's do it again. Okay. It's called the four, seven, eight breath. Okay, here we go. Inhale for a count of four. Hold your breath for a count of seven. Now exhale for eight, which is a little more difficult. And then we're going to repeat. Inhale for four. Hold for seven. You can do it with your eyes open, your eyes closed. Exhale for eight. Now, if you'd like, you can add a little bonus feature. At the end of your out breath, count for two and hold the breath out. And then repeat, inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. Try not to get to the end of your breath till that eight count. And then hold for two, hold it out. One more cycle, inhaling for four. So we're helping build a reliable home base for our awareness, like an internal scaffolding or architecture for our consciousness to rest back over and over so we can invoke those qualities that are most essential to us. Beautiful. Nice. I, I feel a shift, even though I was talking over much of that, I feel an immediate <laughs> shift and I hope you do too. Yeah, I feel myself get a little more, go from here to like here. A little mm, more alignment. A little more centered. Yeah, a little mm. more centered, feeling a little more alignment. Yeah. yeah. The second exercise. So again, it's amazing how much people try to control when we really have very little control of anything whatsoever. <laughs> and that's becoming really clear right now. But very clear. I have no control over anything really. Yeah. Yeah. But what I can control, what I can change instantly is my breath, my movement and focus. So let's go into some control movement, but actually let it be a little more free flowing, free form. So just like fear is excitement without breath, one of our other favorite quotes is, fear is frozen fun. Mm. So if you feel yourself scared, in fact, make yourself scared, like you saw a ghost or oh, usually we hold our breath at the top and everything freezes up. <laughs> but if we wiggle, if we start to move our body, we can thaw mm. the rigidity. We can thaw that churning excessive speed and we can feel more flow. We can go from fear to flow. And it was one of our, our mentors, Gay and Katie Hendricks, who said, fear is frozen fun. So let's melt the fear mm -hmm. with uh, Katie Hendricks exercise she calls creative joint play. So we're going to do it in contrast. Okay. Just a little movement and then some big movement. All right. Lead us through. So we're going to begin. Uh, if you have mm -hmm. your digital device, hold it or imagine you have it. And with your working, your dominant hand, just start to scroll through your text. Maybe, you know, check out all the news, your, your Buzzfeed, your social media, check out all your stuff. Maybe responding to some texts. Oh, I missed those notifications. And <laughs> notice how much breath you've got going on. Notice how much movement is happening. <laughs> also notice your current state of aliveness and vitality. Okay, now stop that. Mm -hmm. Americans spend at least eight hours a day with their digital device. And we're really locked into how much we can move. So now let's... Yeah, it felt really small and kind of compact and limit, like no range, of, no movement, really. It's just like all fingers. And there wasn't a whole lot of breath. No, either. it just kind of like all, everything kind of seemed to be small and narrow. Kind of frozen. <laughs> no. So now with that same finger, mm -hmm. imagine there's an eyeball on that finger and look all around the room with your finger, just your fingertip. 
Hmm. And how many different ways can you move that finger side to side, up and down? Now put eyeballs on all your fingers Ooh. and take a look around the room. Yeah, maybe looking at you, eyeballs on your wrists. Take a look around the room with your wrists. Let's, and like Nicole's already jumped ahead. Can't She's so it. precocious. Put Can't eyeballs on your elbows, your elbow crease, the back of your elbow. Put eyeballs on your shoulder. Mm. Put eyeballs on your scapula, your shoulder blade. Look, if you feel yourself repeating the same movement three or more times, try a different movement. Try behind and below and above and around you <laughs> and try to invent a new movement. And as you continue to do this, notice how much you're breathing. Notice, yeah, change the rhythm, change the pace. Notice, of course, how much you're moving and you're breathing and notice your sense of aliveness and begin to find a natural, easy way to slow and pause that movement. And now do a body scan. Notice your left and right hand, wrist, forearm, elbow, arm, shoulder. Likely the side you just moved in that creative joint play feels a lot more invigorated. So let's do that for our full body. All right, let's move so, the chairs. So yeah, we're gonna move the chairs. Come stand in with us if you'd like to join and have enough room around you. So when we are born, we are born with over two to 3,000 movement potentials. However, by the time that we are 18, by the time the average adult is 18 years old, we move down to only two to 300 movement potentials in our kinosphere. Kinosphere is any way we can move where there's still at least one foot on the ground. So put your eyeballs on your fingers. How about both hands fingers? And look all around the room with your eyeball fingers, your eyeball knuckles, elbow eyeballs, get them going. We're already warmed up, our eyeballs on our shoulders. And maybe your arms are doing different things, exploring the space around you. Now, the mothers, moms who were watching, I hear you've got eyes in the back of your head, so get those eyeballs in the back of your head. Put eyeballs on your forehead. How about eyeballs on your nose? Eyeballs on your chin? How about eyeballs on all the vertebrae, your neck, your thoracic, <laughs> your lumbar spine? Eyeballs on your hiney? Get your ischial tuberosity eyeballs. Eyeballs on your kneecaps. Eyeballs in the back of your knees. How about eyeballs on your toes, on the soles of your feet? How many different unique movement possibilities can you create? Notice how you're breathing. <laughs> and can you add that essence quality, that core value of what you're dedicated mm. to and allow your body to be like a living, moving prayer of what you want more of. As you breathe like this for another three deep breaths, eyeballs in another, maybe on your earlobes. How about eyeballs on all the follicles on your hair, on your head, and find an easy, natural way to begin to slow down the movement. Mm. You don't have to do a traditional yoga or a qigong or structured movement to feel more flow. And <sighs> I feel a little warmer. I feel a lot more freer, open, wider, expanded. I got the tingles. Little tingles yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was a little close to like dancing, Heath. You were dancing a little bit there. Is that what you call that? We'll call it that. <laughs> we'll call it creative you're joy and play. You're, very generous. Your dancing is creative joy and play. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Definitely. Definitely. Now, what we'd like to share with you last is one of our very favorite affirmations. And you might have heard it uh, before. We learned it first from one of our favorite teachers, Cam Tai Chow. And it is Om Mani Padme Hum. It is our favorite uh, mantra meditation for Just compassion, for loving kindness. And we'd like to share this with you as a way to, this is something that we dedicate ourselves to over and over and over again as a practice of compassion, practice of loving kindness, friendliness towards ourself, towards each other. And this, this expansive, this global community that we are constantly impacting and being impacted by. What's happening in China can and will and does happen to us all the way over here on the other side of the planet. So how does my vibration affect not only who I am, but every person and every everyone I come in contact with and everyone that I even imagine? So this is one way that I can start to align myself, my energy system, my field with all that is, with this Om Mani Padme Hum. And we'd love for you to find a place to either just sit and listen if you like. We're going to 
chant this, kind of sing it. We're actually going to bring out our favorite drum. Can you grab the oh, drum? Oh, let's grab the drum. And it's going to grab let's, our drum. Let's translate. So yeah. This so means... what, what are we doing? Yeah. So Om, Om Mani Om is um, the sound of oneness, the sound of all existence coming together as one. Mm-hmm. Mm, om. The sound of all the universe harmonizing, resonating as one. And the jewel is Mani. Mani is the jewel, and it's this representation of wisdom. This jewel, Om the sound of oneness, mani, the, the feeling and the experience of the jewel of wisdom, wisdom coming and, through. And that luminescence of the jewel cuts through ignorance, yes. cuts through the darkness. And Padme. Padme is the lotus, the symbol of beauty, the symbol of compassion. It's also the symbol of transmutation as the the lotus grows in the bottom of the lake bed, under the mud, under the muck, and with its trust, with its dedication, mm-hmm. surges through the dark waters until it arrives in the light. And, and then, that's how we can metaphorically transmute even out of this muck, yes. like the lotus. <laughs> yes, out of this muck. And then hum, 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 hum. Oh, well, the, the sound of an open heart. It is an infusion of loving kindness. This is the way we can infuse through sound loving kindness into our practice. So overall, this 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 Om Mani Padme Hum translates as may the jewel in the lotus shine forth the light of love and compassion mm. to unite all existence as one. Mm-hmm. So again, we invite you to sit back, listen, and enjoy. Or if you'd like to, we're going to repeat this nine times Sing and we're going to create a beat. With our giant drum, since we got to be in our house, we get to share with you our um, our drum here. And um, here we go. Let's just yeah. kind of warm up to each other. Yeah. It's my left hand. I used to drum with my left hand. Right. <sighs> so breathing. Find a position that feels good for you. Sitting, standing, laying down. Inhale. Oh, money, Padme hum. Oh, money, Padme hum. Oh, money, Padme hum. Oh, money, Padme hum. Oh, money, Padme What do you want to dedicate your life to? Maybe it's something that you've been practicing all along for many years or decades or all your life. Or maybe there's a quality or an intention that you'd like to rededicate yourself to or a relationship that you want to affirm or grow or establish. Combined studies show that it takes at minimum 40 to 66 days to forge a new habit. So be patient with yourself. Yeah, but, be kind, be generous, compassionate. Um, when we're wishing you, thank you so much for joining us for yeah. the last five days. We've had so much fun. Absolutely. And please write down your comments. We look forward to responding to them. And if you ever want to be in touch with us, again, we're livingmeta, M-E-T-T-A dot com, Heath and Nicole. And we're wishing you a life filled with love, laughter, and connection. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.